Good afternoon. This is Spirit Journey. What I'm going to say up front, am I a fool? Am I just a big fool? That's how I feel right now. And what I'm going to talk about is are things that I discussed in past videos, but the same theme is, is, is asking myself, am I a fool? And so what I'll discuss are different videos that I watched. One film that I watched, a documentary on modern day South Africa and the white uh, people who are still living there, their plight. The second was a documentary about uh, Madagascar and the people who are um, trying to earn a living, the indigenous population, and how it's making me feel. And I would say up front also, not only do I ask myself, am I the fool, but that the monetary system as we know it today is not a natural system it's an artificial system. It's a system that was introduced to modern populations. I'm also going to discuss about this film, I mean not film, another documentary on um, San Francisco. That's a city in California. And all, all these three documentaries that I saw today, it, they're all going to kind of tie in. Okay. Now the first documentary was about South Africa and how the, after apartheid ended, I think in 1994 officially, and how the majority black population are using their, using their majority status to oppress and to take over the land of the white farmers that still live there. And it was hard for me to watch because I was getting very emotional. Emotional due to um, the history of my living in the Americas and being from someone who's uh, half of their ancestry are people who are uh, victimized and brought over in the what's known as the transatlantic slave trade and how you had the colonial powers of Europe that went all over the planet and to take resources and they use initially their own Europeans to start off these colonial um, areas around the world and then they started to exploit the indigenous populations and importing uh, what they call human trafficking of peoples and enslaving them and it was a system that was going on for hundreds of years so when I was watching the film about South Africa I, I had a I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest the anger that I felt about well what about uh, the, the only the white South Africaners or Afrikaners are only there because of the Colonial, colonialism from the past and now the system change in South Africa, the, the official ending of apartheid. So now on the surface to me, it looks like another uh, video to vilify black people and that white people are the real victims. That's, that's how, th those are the emotions that I had. And I want to be honest. But on the other token, that these people are living on that land and they understand the land and they're farming and they, they're, they're producing bounty. And then like with a twist that the ruling population now in, in the country of South Africa are destroying a lot of the, the farmlands. And I asked myself, now, why would you destroy pharma? You all need to eat. You all need to eat. But I also add that 
they showed like a, a gathering of of a black population in South Africa. It, it was like their Independence Day. I, I forget the, the the term that that's used, the name of the holiday, but it's like their uh, freedom holiday, the end of apartheid officially, and they're, they're celebrating. And then I, I watch what they were wearing and what they were doing. And I thought to myself, Wow, these people, some of the people there looked out of control. And with with Western items like the, these oversized sunglasses, it, it was they looked more like for cosmetic, for show, not like something for the sun. Uh, again, people could wear what they want to wear, but these are the emotions that I felt. And I'm thinking all this stuff that they have um, accessories. These accessories aren't going to get them out of poverty because they also added on that doc in that documentary that the people, um, most of the black people there are in poverty. So yes, they have a victory over the end of apartheid, but now a new system, and I feel that this new system is not a system that is really to help the indigenous people or the, the, the blacks that live there, but it's again to um, be, be used as puppets. And a, a puppet, you know, someone who's being like a puppet and is being controlled and having you do the dirty work, the dirty work of invading somebody's land, um, whether, you know, whether they're white landowners, the fact that, that the land is being invaded and, and taken over and burned. So I, I start to think, what logic is it to do this? Now, I feel that, what, again, I, I'm not South African. I, I'm not from South Africa. I'm, I'm from the Americas. And so, you know, and I've never been there. So I don't really know, I don't have hands-on uh, experience what's going on there. And I could easily just say, oh, what should have been done. When, when I first learned of the apartheid system ending, I was thinking, just get rid of the, your former oppressors to kick them out of your country. And some African nations ha uh, have done that in the past. And so I feel because they didn't do that, and, and push them out of the country, then anyone who, if you allow them to stay, then they should stay, be allowed to stay, and be allowed to keep up the land that they do have, but to have the, but, but to allot land for the people who are landless, and learn how to cultivate the land. What I saw in the film that the People who are now in power in South Africa, the masses, are not learning how to cultivate what they do have, and that th that they're still remaining in poverty, and that they mention about a piece of a, a, a territory in South Africa uh, that is still populated by whites, and there's. As in, in the documentary said, there's no crime there. That it, you know, the, the whites there, they have weapons, I mean, meaning guns, and they know how to protect their land. And I said to myself, wow, so here you have someone who's not indigenous to a, a region, but they have a control over this domain, and they're basically flourishing. They, they, they have a continuity. But when I look at the, the blacks that are living there, there's no real continuity. Maybe apartheid might have ended, but they still seem to be in a state of oppression. And whether they have uh, Western clothes, uh, uh, accessories on, it's, it's they, they, I feel that they're not looking at what needs to be done to, to Embrace your land, not to burn it, 
or pollute it, but to cultivate it. Why aren't the people there cultivating that land? What, what is this? Even the land that is being taken by the, uh, taken from the whites that are living there, okay, if you take it, cultivate That's all I'm saying. So, so it had me asking these questions. Okay, you, you're, you want this independence and freedom, but they still seem to be impoverished. And why is it that, what makes a nation prosper? What, what makes the European living outside of his true domain, what makes him and, uh, and her prosper? So I, I, I asked that question. And then I watched the film, uh, the documentary on, oh, it was actually on, on San Francisco. And San Francisco, it, it was the first time I ever saw a real dilapidation of a city. Now, I live in New York City, as many of you know, and New York City is going down. But when, I, when they showed downtown San Francisco, which is in California, my mouth dropped. They showed uh, needles, hypodermic needles, all over the ground because there's a, a drug, a heavy drug epidemic, epidemic there. They showed human feces all over the city. They showed people, white people, that I, I've never seen this many white people really looking really down and out and defec defecating on the street, um, doing these weird dances, and I assume they, they might be on the, the influence. And I, I, I said, oh my goodness, to see this in my country. I, I've never been to San Francisco um, but it, I was told San Francisco is one of the most expensive places to live. And they said that part of the problem of why there's so much homelessness in San Francisco is because people can't afford to live there. There's a housed, housing shortage. And so you have a lot of homeless. And I guess with homelessness also attached to it is... Um, Poverty. If you if you can't afford a place to live, or maybe also to to buy stuff there, food and stuff is expensive too. And so you know, there's a lot of homelessness and just a lot of despair. I I'm afraid of seeing things like this. That coming from the East Coast, most of the people that you see down and out and in despair are usually. I'm sorry. Let me get that. Most of the people that you see in despair are usually people of black or Hispanic heritage. I, I don't even see as many needles. I, I, I might have maybe seen in my lifetime one hypodermic needle on the ground, if even that. Um, so, my, so it's like a culture shock that I thought only New York City was a place that need, that needed a big band-aid, but to see uh, San Francisco, and I'm concerned about it spreading to other uh, other cities. That so, something is happening. That people are people are being the system seems to be shifting. There's a, a shifting. That now. It's like an old system and it's replaced by something else. But that new system it really isn't something that's going to be benefiting anybody, really. You know, whites or blacks. There's a lot of, there, there is homelessness in New York City, but you don't, I have not personally seen any tent city. In uh, San Francisco, they show tent cities, people living out of a, a camping tent. And I'm wondering, what is going on? Then I 
I saw the other documentary, and this one was on Mad Madagascar. Madagascar is a very large island off the coast of southern, the southern portion of Africa, the, 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 on the right side. And it's, I think, tropical. It's a warm place. And it's very mineral rich. What they're saying in the documentary is one of the poorest countries around. And then they show the indigenous people. And yes, um, the indigenous people are also a, a, a people of color, as it's said. And they're a lot of poverty. They mentioned that the, well, the industry there, at least in this documentary, People, it's, it's like a mine, mining town. They, they mine for minerals. And you had, you had this one European from France that was there. He, he lived there for many years. And he seems to be doing relatively well. But the indigenous population there are, are, are like living on a thread, on, on, like a, on a fringe of existence. They make for 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 digging for the minerals. They get paid three what they call three pounds. I think three British pounds. That's like what is it like a a, a dollar fifty or U.S. dollars a day? And she had just this woman had just enough to get a cup of rice to cook. That's it. And I said, wow. And then they, they take the, they, they, their hope in, in that society, their, their hope is to mine enough uh, and, and then sell it. And it's usually selling it to a European. And that, 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 that it's, not, it's not enough. And then I ask myself, how is it that you have an indigenous population and a system that's really not indigenous to them. And they, they work in the end, they work hard and they work long hours. And they're working for pennies. And but, but, but why? why? Why aren't they thriving? So it's, it's just a weird system. Mo money, it's like they're working for money. Yeah, paper money. And paper money, at least in the United States, it's not a real money. It's not backed by, by gold or silver or copper or whatever. It's just paper. And I ask myself, how could that happen? That we're working 15 hours a day, 12 hours a day, 8 hours a, a, a day, for a piece of paper. And then you can give this piece of paper and hand it to someone so they can buy something, whether it's to, to buy food, uh, pay for rent. And then if you have extra, you know, you could buy jewelry, you know, like, like I, I made these necklaces, you know, I bought the material and then I fabricated it, you know. I mean, I, I didn't need this. But I just, I, I wanted to keep busy. It was just something for my enjoyment, relaxation. But like they mentioned, like in Madagascar, the girls were saying, oh, you know, maybe um, if, if I'm able to get like a sapphire or something, you know, maybe, you know, get, get, get a piece of jewelry. Now, these people don't need jewelry to wear. They barely have. Their, you know, their substance, and then I asked myself when it, when when I heard the girl talk about, hey, you know, maybe, because uh, to get a piece of jewelry or, or the stone will cost them um, days of late labor, and they they can't afford that. And then I then I started looking within myself. I said, I I bought these little beads. I I'm in really no different condition live in the United States. I mean, I'm very fortunate than most people. I live in a comfortable, clean place. I feel relatively safe in this building. They, they keep it up. 
but I'm really no difference that um, my resources. And I'm living here, and I'm, I, I have the, the little beads. These are just glass beads, you know, and, and crystal. But I, I look at myself. Am I really that different than these people in Madagascar or the blacks in South Africa who, you know, they, 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 they're happy about that apartheid ended, but they're still in poverty. And yet you got a lot of poor whites living in South Africa too. Um, what else? And then San Francisco. The first time I ever saw that many whites that are really down and out. So we're, so where is this, where am I leading to all this? That uh, an awareness that I, I feel vulnerable. I have a feeling of vulnerability right now. That on the surface, when, you know, when, you, when you're not watching documentaries like that, you, you have a false sense of security because, you know, I live in a, in a nice building, whatever. Um, and I'm not physically living on the street anymore. But I, 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 I was in a homeless shelter. And so maybe I might be so-called okay now, but I, I, I'm, I can easily fall in the trap of the people in San Francisco or the people in Madagascar because we're all working in a system that it's not a native, it's not a, an, an indigenous earthly system to work your butt off for a piece of paper. And they work long hours, so it's not, they're not poor because they, they're not working. They're doing their, their best, but it's a system they didn't create. And so you're always like behind. And just like with me, with, with uh, when, when I graduate, I thought the myth, if I graduate from college, you know, get a, get an undergraduate, then I got my master's degree, and boom, I'm not marketable. They changed the rules, and it, it all that work, even though I put in the hours and the time and, and, and personal excellence to achieve this goal, I thought the goal, I thought the outcome would be, I'll be able to be like, the, the mainstream people, the, the whites, the rich whites that have a nice job, office job, or wherever where they work, and uh, be able to buy my own property, things like that. But that didn't happen. And so that's where I ask myself, am I, the, am I a fool? Am I just a real big fool? And I just thought that I was on top of everything. And that's why I say it like that. And then I think about also, what comes to my mind, uh, I, I've been mentioning a lot about with this the, these Hollywood scandals, the, the sex scandals uh, that's uh, against children and, and women. And look at this system. This system, Hollywood started what was that uh, ninety years ago or something. It's it's not a natural system. It's relatively new in the United States. You have people who. Um, Learn it, get a script, you have someone with a camera, and you like play at. And then someone pays you a lot of money. And I wonder how, why is that Hollywood pays so much money? I, I don't understand it. You work a couple, of, a, a couple of months on a project, and then someone can give you several million dollars. Some actors make several millions of dollars. And then you have those who maybe just starting out, they might get a few um, hundred thousand, maybe close to a hundred thousand, which I think is still good. Most people don't make a hundred thousand dollars. I would be able to live off of that in a year. It's, it's, it's a nice salary, in my opinion. So you have people, and mostly whites are in this field, and it seems like Feels that that white people dominate, make more money, and it's more comforts associated with their work. You look at companies that hire exclusively whites. What it looks like, 
And when I was in the job market, this is what I saw. I saw areas that were exclusively white, almost exclu exclusively white male. And in some of them I had a few white females and it was very plush. I, 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 w I used to work in banking. I, I worked in many industries, but one of the industry I was in was in banking and finance and the types of people that work in these industries. So you work less hours and more pay, but areas that has a concentration of people of color and females work longer or more tedious tasks and you get less money. And we usually work in, people call it, usually work in uh, less thriving communities, poorer communities, communities that have a lot of unemployment, despair, and a lot of violence. So like in Africa, in South Africa, how is it that this particular enclave, uh, this white enclave, how is it that they have no crime? And why is it that in, in the United States, a lot of black communities have a lot of crime? What is happening to people on this planet to make some thrive? And why are a lot of indigenous peoples, why don't we thrive? Why aren't I, Spirit Journey, thriving the same way? I thought if you have learned their mindset, maybe dress like them, maybe talk like them, but somehow it will graduate me to uh, have what they have. But it's, it's not the case. And I don't want to live and know that someone else is even in more despair than I am. Because it's really reminding me, hey, you're not, you, you're just one or two steps away from where they are. So, that's why I call myself, am I the fool? Am I the fool to believe that I had it all there, but I'm really not? And that at any drop of a hat, because I'm not, I don't originate the system, this monetary system. And I feel like there's a, a system within a system that is governing the planet. Just like in South Africa, that I believe that the cover, current cover story of South Africa is that the, the bad black people are killing and the violent and all this and that. But I think these blacks are being used by another force. They what they call the cabal, the the people who run the planet, and they're being instructed these activities of violence or whatever to control. I think uh, South Africa is, is introducing a communist type system and that this communism thing, this force that they're trying to take, get a stronghold, so they want to take over the land. It's not so much white people, that's the cover story. It's anyone who owns that land because initially Whites were encouraged to set up farm farmlands and everything to cultivate the land, just like in the United States. Whites were brought here to cultivate the land. Yes, they had slavery here, and blacks that did the cultivating, but the whites oversaw all that stuff. But they directly benefited from that system. And now that the land is so-called cultivated, now is the second step of the. New World Order plan, in my opinion. So now they are replacing, they don't need the same type of white people in this old, the older system of control. Now they're implementing the next phase of control. I think it's to be a, a uh, universal control over the planet by one system. Right now you have uh, factions, different groups, slash nationalities, nations, you know, same thing. And these nations are now going to congeal together. 
I think that's the ultimate plan. But still, where does this, this lead, leave the indigenous people of a region? I, excuse me, that's what I'm really af afraid about. Because regardless what happens to mainstream white societies or what's happening in Europe, especially in Sweden and Germany with the influx of the uh, what they call migrant workers from uh, North Africa and what they call the Middle East, it's, it's just used to change of the, what I called before, the changing of the gods, the changing of a system, and to replace one system to the new phase and using indigenous people to do that and then get rid of them, get rid of us all. So it's not about that, my belief that South African blacks are going to be the powerhouse of Africa, or whatever, and could, could, uh, take over the planet. No. I think once they're used in South Africa, they're going to get rid of them too. And the, the other countries like Madagascar, you're working for a piece of paper, you're struggling, you, you don't control the resources of your own land. You're taking your resources and giving it to the alien who's making all this money. And then they're going to sell the product back to you with skyrocketed prices. And so you are a slave in your own system. And I realized watching these different documentaries today that I, I'm no different than all these people around, the, around the, the country or the world. That I'm in essence a slave to. A slave to a system. And that I thought that if I did and tried to replicate what the people who are, do, who are thriving, get out that, that I would have it too. Even look at YouTube. And the, the, that a system of hope that, hey, you know, maybe I, I was told that you can make money off of YouTube a couple of years ago. And then I, I monetized last year for the first time. And I received not a penny, zero. But yet they're advertising on my videos and they're making money. But I'm not. Yet I'm doing all the work, doing the making the videos. Again, I started YouTube not knowing about the monetization. I did it because I wanted to express myself verbally, yeah, express myself, let people know how I'm feeling. I, I think it's very therapeutic. But even that, I didn't get a penny, and yet the system is making money off of me. I'm, I'm like a slave. I didn't get paid a penny. I do all the work and no pay. So this video is really about opening our eyes that whether you're you are a native of the planet or whether you're a white person that the system is changing and is going to affect all of us and is actually enslaving us but we have different levels of slavery of deception to make you think you're free and you're not and you're, you're, you're a slave like the, like the Matrix, you're, you're a slave, Neo. And so here we, we work, we work, we work. We, you know, the families are falling apart because we work so many long hours. We don't talk to our children. Our children are, are raised themselves. They, they're raising themselves on, on uh, social media. Uh, we don't communicate anymore, and everything is going kaput. I, I think we all need to wake up, I need to wake up and really start thinking, what, what can I do to break out of this matrix of control what's happening in society today? So whether you live in a, in a high-rise luxury building or, or in a walk-up tenement, you know, we, we're, we're really all in, in the same state. It's just a matter of when, who gets hit by the wave first, but it's ultimately going to hit all of us. So I asked myself today, what could I do to empower myself, to protect myself, 
so that I don't become a victim. So I hope you enjoyed this video I, and I hope it really uh, produces uh, uh, thoughts to ponder on and to awaken. So definitely you could uh, write your comment below. Share this video with friends and family members and you can subscribe. And also I have a PayPal. And if you like, uh, you could just print, go to my channel and on my channel you'll see on the banner and it has the, uh, the thing that you can click that says PayPal and then you just follow the prompts. Any of that would be uh, greatly appreciated. I thank, I thank you so much for watching this video and let's all really start thinking what's going on on this planet and how to protect ourselves and our interests. Okay? Thank you again. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.